Amen. Aloha and welcome to Amen Podcast, where we preach the good news of Jesus Christ and how it applies to everyday life. I'm Lokelani, your host, and today my husband Alex is preaching about signs. I'm going to read the verses, which are Matthew 12, verses 38 through 42. Alex will preach and then we'll end with a question and answer time with me. All right, let's do it. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. Amen. In verse 38, Uh, The scribes and the Pharisees, they come to Jesus and they say, we want a sign from you. This is not the first time they've done this and they're going to continue to do it because they want a sign other than the signs that Jesus has already given them. Jesus has healed people miraculously. He has cast out demons, but the exorcisms and the healings were not enough for them. So in verse 38, they say, teacher, trying to flatter him, we wish to see a sign from you. And that's all they thought of him. Actually, they only thought of him as a teacher. They didn't want him to be the son of God. They didn't want him to be the Messiah. They just wanted to be him to be a plain old teacher. And that spirit still exists today in the world. The atheists, the university graduates, the doctorates, um, and even just the skeptics on TikTok and Instagram, they just want Jesus to be a teacher and that's it, a good man. And that's it. They don't want him to be God. They don't want him to be man all at once, hundred percent in both categories. The depravity of man uh, is a theme that's all throughout reform theology and it's all throughout scripture. And what it simply means is we can be surrounded by signs from God and still not believe in him. The Pharisees, they were looking right in the face of God, and yet they would not believe. You would think an exorcism is enough. You think healings is enough, but it wasn't enough because they're so depraved. We're so spiritually deaf. We're so spiritually blind. We cannot see. You would think the the uh, the flying of an eagle through the air. You would think the complexity of a snowflake. You would think... Um, the, the majesty of a woman giving birth to a child yeah. would be enough for us. Romans says that all of creation tells us of God's glory, yet it's, an, it's not enough. You know, we convince ourselves of things like the Big Bang. You would think the fact that we're floating through space right now on a rock, just far enough from the sun that we don't uh, burn up and and not too close, or not too close that we don't, not too close that we burn up, not so far that we freeze to death. You would think that all this would be enough for us to believe in God, but we're so depraved, it's not enough for us. Verse 39, but he answered them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Jesus calls it evil and adulterous to ask for a sign when there's already signs given to you. It's evil to ask God for a sign when there's evidence all around you. And it's, it's this hyper charismatic, super spiritual, um, hyper charismatic over spiritualization that's crept into the church. And what we're doing is we're actually cheating on God by believing in spiritual signs that aren't from him. Don't you see? It's like we're accepting gifts from another lover. It's cheating on him because we say, oh, well, this, this, um, these, the, the planets are aligning this week and, uh, my chakra is just whatever vibrating or whatever it does. Or, um, you know, oh, this person that went to, I went to school with, they liked my photo. I haven't seen them in 20 years. This is a sign. We look for signs everywhere. And it's not that 
it's not that well, I'll get in, I'll get into why signs aren't bad in the next point, but we've let this creep into the church. And so that's why we see things um, and practices in certain churches that raise our antennas. And we're like, what's that? That's weird. That makes me uncomfortable. What's that all about? What we're trying to do is what these Pharisees were doing. Scripture is not enough for them. Um, prayer is not enough for them. Uh, uh, the, just the foot, the hand, the fingerprint of God in creation is not enough for them. And so they look for it in other places. And so they add weird spiritual practices in church that aren't in scripture or they twist scripture to mean things that it doesn't mean so that they can have these emotional experience of signs. What they wanted is they wanted Jesus to like write his name in the clouds or something, or uh, make a star fall right down in front of them. Like they wanted something other than the healings and the exorcisms, something to give them goosebumps, to give them chicken skin, to get that chill down their spine so they could know, oh yeah, this is it. But we see in John chapter six, when Jesus feeds the 5,000, that that wasn't enough for them either. Jesus was trying to tell them, hey, you guys are just like, you don't really believe that I can give you real spiritual bread that can take away your spiritual hunger forever. You just want the physical hunger right now. And even that miracle is not enough for you to believe in me. Verse 40, for just as Jonah was there three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the son of man be there, be in three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This is an interesting way for Jesus to talk about um, his resurrection, but he says, the only sign that I'm going to give this generation is the sign of Jonah. And the sign of Jonah was that Jonah was in the whale for three days and he rose again to go preach to Nineveh and they repented. And Jesus rose again um, from the grave after being in the earth three days, being in the tomb three days. The men of, men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. So what this means is Jonah was the sign. He went to Nineveh, and they repented, and he was the sign. The fact that he was walking on the earth again, the fact that he was able to live for three days in a whale, and then come and preach to this wicked adulterous, um, pagan nation. That was the sign. Nineveh was the capital of Syria at the time. And they believed in all kinds of crazy things. They worshiped false gods and God sent Jonah there because of how evil it was. And God loved them. You might be saying, why? It's his character. He's merciful and gracious. And he loved them, so he sent Jonah there. Jonah didn't want to go, uh, but it took him being in that whale, repenting and getting up and going um, for them to hear the gospel, to hear the good news, and to change. Now, what's interesting is just like Jonah was the sign, Jesus is the sign. And what's even more interesting is they're actually both, they actually both came from Galilee, to preach to the pagans, to the Gentiles. And God gives signs. I want you guys to know that. Like he gave Jonah to them as a sign. Mm -hmm. He gave Jesus to us as a sign. Gideon and Moses, they both asked God for a sign mm -hmm. when they were asked um, to do a task for God. But this was also before the word of God and before the incarnation. And so there may be teachers and preachers out there that say, wait for your sign, wait for your breakthrough, wait for God to put his purpose in your path, all this kind of stuff that makes us feel good. And it makes us leaving church with our eyes wide open thinking, okay, how's God going to speak to me? Oh, this bird just pooped on my window. Oh, oh, this must be a sign, you know? And when they preach these texts, like Gideon and Moses in the old Testament, we have to remember it was before the word of God. It was before, before the written word of God, you have a Bible in your pocket. You have a Bible on your shelf, dust it off. This is before the incarnation. And so we're, we're not allowed in scripture to go look for a sign when you have 
not read your Bible and prayed about it. We don't need to look for a sign when uh, the Bible prohibits it. So you don't need to look for a sign that it's okay to live with your boyfriend when the Bible prohibits it. You know, it doesn't actually, it doesn't say don't live with your boyfriend, but it says don't shack up. And if you live with someone that you love in the, from, the, from the opposite sex, what's going to happen? And so you don't need to look for a sign for stuff that scripture is saying don't do. Um, and we also don't need uh, to so quickly look for a sign when we haven't taken the time to seek wisdom. You know, scripture tells us to seek wisdom and wait on God. Obedience, patience, and dependence. Obedience, patience, and dependence is how we get answers from God. There's a time where Saul uh, went to a medium to get answers on what he should do. And a medium is someone that, you know, crystal ball kind of thing, someone that speaks to the demonic realm. And he gets in trouble for it by God. He gets in huge trouble for it. Because why? He wasn't being dependent on God. He wasn't being patient while waiting on God. And he wasn't being obedient to God. If you want to get answers from God, obedience, patience, and dependence. Because answers from God always come with a purpose for you. And that purpose is spiritual maturity. That purpose is growth. You grow more mature when you learn to obey God, when you learn to uh, wait for him, and when you weren't wait to depend on him. It's the same with children. Kids ask, can I have candy after dinner? That waiting, that obedience, and that patience matures that child so that they don't end up in jail. I want a new bike. I don't have enough money. I'm going to go to the store and rob it and get a bike. That's how you end up in jail. You didn't learn obedience, patience, and dependence. It's the same spiritually. It's for your growth. So you learn how to work hard and earn it. So you learn how to love God deeper. There's an episode of Bluey where they want ice cream and uh, Bandit is like, you guys got to work for it. And they work for it and they get the ice cream and Bluey says it's the best ice cream she's ever had. She's had ice cream a dozen times, but this bite transcended reality because why? She worked for it. She earned it. You cannot earn your salvation. Jesus earned it for you, but faith without works is dead. And the way that you grow in obedience, the way you grow in love, the way you grow spiritually in your walk with God is you learn to work through patience. Mm, yep. You learn to work through dependence. Mm -hmm. And you will experience the joy of that when you do. Nineveh was willing to listen to preaching that drew them to repentance. Mm -hmm. This generation wasn't. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is talking to a generation of people who he is preaching to the greatest wisdom yes. anyone's ever heard, the deepest treasures of God's mind mm -hmm. being revealed and they will not repent. Nineveh did and Nineveh was pagan. They had not gone to Sunday school. They had not gone to VBS Bible camps. They had not gone to spiritual retreats. They had not gr uh, grown up in the Bible belt and nearly all of America is the Bible belt. Now it's not just the South. I mean, there's Christian TikToks everywhere. You are able to learn something about God without even trying to seek it out. It'll come on your for, P for you page. But Nineveh repented and the generation that Jesus is talking to in this context did it. And it's the same with our context today. And you might be saying, well, I'm, I'm a Christian. All my friends are Christian. We all go to church, but I don't know why I can't grow. I don't know why I don't like feel like I love God. I don't know why like God's not revealing himself to me. It's because you're not responding to true preaching. Mm -hmm. Itching ears, Paul tells us. Itching ears was a, a thing that pigs had. And what pigs would do is they would scratch their ears on rocks, damaging their ears, but they would do it. Why? Because these, they had this disease that made their ears itch. It's the same with us. We're looking for teachers and influencers to scratch our itching ears, to tell, tell us what we want to hear. 
because we will not endure sound doctrine. That time is now. Paul is saying that time is coming where people are going to love themselves. They're going to be disobedient to their parents. They will not be able to endure sound doctrine. They won't be able to take it. They're going to walk out of church. They're going to turn on that podcast and never turn it on again because they can't take it. Their ears are itching so bad. What needs to happen is, you know, when I had this Rottweiler when I was a kid, we used to give it pig ears to eat, to chew on. That's what needs to happen. We need to cut off our itching pig ears and feed them to the dogs. That's all they're good for. Cut them off completely so that we stop itching and God can give us new ears. Nineveh was willing to listen. You, the people around us and you and I listening to this podcast, we are not willing to listen. I'm, I'm listening to this audio book by John MacArthur. It's called the, um, the Gospel According to Jesus. And I didn't realize how itchy my ears were until I turned this on. I do not want to hear the fact that I am a slave to Christ and what that really means. And it's hard to see how bad I want my independence, how bad I want just a relationship with God, but I don't want that relationship for him to be lordship over my life. The relationship you have with God is a great relationship, but it's lordship. It's great because he's great and he's good. Not because the position that you're in is necessarily uh, great for um, your feelings mm. or great for your emotions. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of times where you're going to feel like this doesn't feel great. Mm -hmm. This doesn't feel great because he's asking me to be a slave to him and to do something that I don't want to do. Yeah. Eventually it leads to your freedom. Verse 42, the queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon and behold, something greater than Solomon is here. Jonah was the sign. Jesus was a sign. Solomon's wisdom was a sign. Jesus's wisdom is a sign because Jesus is the wisdom of God. Solomon's wisdom was the sign that God was with him and greatly favored him for the work that God had called him to do. Jesus's wisdom in his preaching, the wisdom of God being risen from the grave was a sign that God had greatly favored Jesus and called him to be the Messiah to do the work that he had called him to do and he prepared him to do. The queen of Sheba was willing to go to great lengths to get wisdom. This genera generation wasn't willing to lift a finger. The generation around Jesus wasn't willing to lift a finger to listen to the wisdom of God. The queen of the South, she's often called the queen of Sheba, was willing to travel great lengths without an Uber, without a plane ride, without a limousine, to hear the wisdom of God. In 1 Corinthians 2.17, or 1 Corinthians 1.27, it says, but God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. We, no one would have expected that it was through the death of God's son that he would shame the wise. He chose what is weak to shame the strong. Mm -hmm. And the solution that we have to, to stop relying on signs, to stop looking for signs and just look to Jesus to stop loving uh, the chills and the goosebumps more than we love the son of God himself. The, the solution to that is we have to go to the sign of Jonah like the queen of Sheba. We have to travel to the sign of Jonah like the queen of Sheba traveled. So what do I mean by that? If you go to John 4, 6 through 11, listen to this. Now the Lord, I'm not John, I'm sorry, Jonah Four, six through 11. Jonah 4, 6 through 11. I'm sorry. Now the Lord God appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you do well to be angry for the plant? 
And he said, yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also, and also much cattle. Why does he throw the cattle in there? Because God cares for the cows in Nineveh as much as, not as much as, but as well as the people in Nineveh. You see what kind of caring, loving God we have and how different he is from us? What happens here is Jonah preaches in Nineveh and then he goes up and he sits back and he's ready to see God smite Nineveh. He's thinking they're not going to repent. And, you know, they hear, they heard me out, whatever, but God's still going to burn down their city. And he was just sitting there ready for it to happen. What God does is he knew that Jonah was uh, uncomfortable. And so um, just because of the, the season in Nineveh at the time. And so he uh, miraculously sprouted up this plant to give him shade. And then he took the plant away. Jonah gets mad, angry because the plant is gone so much. He wanted to die. He was willing to die because he lost his precious little plant and he wasn't willing to die for the people of Nineveh, 120,000 souls and like living cows, not just plants, cows. And God was saying, you're pitying the plant. Do I, do I not have a right to pity these people? to not show mercy and grace to them. Part of the sign of Jonah is right here in the story. Because just like that plant sprouted up and provided so much shade and beauty, and then yet it withered. A worm, God appointed a worm to attack the plant. 937 of Mark 947, if your eye causes you to slip sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. Just like that worm crawled up and withered away and the sun scorched that plant and it died. So the worm of death ate away at Jesus on the cross and the, the wrath of God scorched him so that we also spiritual Ninevites could live. You see what should have happened there is, you know, Jonah was the one that deserved to wither away, not the plant because we are, reluctant like Jonah. Mm -hmm. We want to be his servants, but we want to serve him our own way. We, uh, we, we don't see the signs of God's character. Mm -hmm. He sends us a whale. He gives us a second chance. He sends us on mission he shows us how um, the people that we're ministering to are, are, are just like us. He sends us a plant to shade us, you know, you see provides for us. And yet we still don't see how gracious and merciful he is. We don't see the signs. Mm -hmm. We're just like him. And so what should have happened is he should have been that plant withering away, but Jesus was the plant. Yeah. Jonah reluctantly went to preach the good, the good news to these people. Jesus willingly, lovingly went. And that's why Jonah, yeah, is a sign of Jesus, but Jesus is greater than Jonah. Yes. Solomon threw all of his wisdom to the wind to chase after women. Mm -hmm. God, G Jesus is the wisdom of God that was thrown to the wind, wind to create a new woman, the bride of Christ, yeah. the body of Christ. You and I, 
see what great lengths Jesus went to so that we might have him as our sign, Mm -hmm. the greatest sign to ever live. We have to see that. So we go to the sign of Jonah like the queen of Sheba. What that means is we take our time to seek him in the word. We take our time to read what he's telling us. We take our time to um, not rush through our Bible study. We take our time to wait on him. We take our time to spend time in prayer with him. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. That's what it means to go to great lengths like the queen of Sheba did. It's like traveling to a distant land to spend time with him. And when we do that, We'll, we'll, we'll experience him. And the power to do that is not just, I got to try harder to, to just get in my word and to pray more and do this. What, what has to happen is you have to love him. What has to happen is you just have to see the sign of Jonah in him. Mm-hmm. You have to see him being the sign that was crucified so that you could live and resurrected to give you the power to leave the sign chasing behind. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your uh, sign that you've given to us, your son. And Jesus, we thank you for your patience with us. And we pray that we would see you and um, be changed by it. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. This is the part of the episode called After the Amen, where we ask you a question to help you apply this message to your life. And so our question for you today is... What sign do you need to stop asking God for? What sign do you need to stop asking God for? And I think for me personally, um, it's certain ways to parent my children. And I won't go into specifics because they listen to the podcast. (laughs) And, you know, it really isn't important. And I'll tell you why. It's like... um, Yeah, I just, I feel like instead of seeking God's wisdom and um, trusting the convictions he's put in my heart, like I need to attain more information. I need to figure more things out. I need to listen to more podcasts. I need to talk to more people about it. And don't get me wrong. Like the Bible says, like the wise man seeks advice, you know, and so seeking advice is not wrong. That's not what I'm saying here is like, turn off everything and only talk to God about every, like, don't talk to anyone else. That's not what I'm saying here, but, um, we can get so preoccupied in trying to find a sign or trying to find, attain wisdom, um, from other people or other sources, Mm -hmm. instead of trusting the conviction that God has put in your heart and going to him and asking him specifically, how should I do this? What should I do? I'm feeling this way about this, like, what do you, you know, bring him in on it. And one thing I heard recently was that guilt is a healthy response to conflict. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we live in a culture where it's like, don't feel guilty. No, no, no. That's like, do your thing, like, um, do what's best for you. Don't listen to the mom guilt. Don't listen to that, this and that. And yeah, maybe at times the mom guilt is a lie and you don't need to listen to certain things, but I think there's so much importance and Alex stressed on this too, of slowing down and realizing, okay, where is this guilt coming from? And what is the action? Do I just keep doing what I'm doing or is it because I need to produce a change? And it's amazing that we can seek God's wisdom in that because the world says, seek more psychology, seek more, uh, you know, scientific proof and whatever, whatever. Um, but we have the word of God and we have the wisdom of God readily available through prayer, through his word, 24 seven, any time of the day. And I think we do ourselves a disservice when we want to go everywhere else to search for wisdom. And not only that, but we overwhelm ourselves. Like it's like, okay, I have to make I listened to this thing and this mom's perspective about the things that I'm struggling with. And now I have to change this, 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 and this, this. And then it's like, how, like, will I even do this? When instead it's like, okay, if I have this conviction, I'm going to go to God and ask him, what's the first step, you know, and allow him to lead me. 
And um, because like as mothers and fathers specifically with what I'm talking about, like he's equipped us to do this. Like Mm -hmm. children are a gift from the Lord. And that gift comes with his provision of equipping us and preparing us to um, care for them. And so um, we have access to just the king of wisdom. And um, I was just thinking like when you're finishing up in verse 42, how the queen of Sheba went to great lengths. And so like a follow-up question is like, what great lengths do you need to take to listen to the wisdom of God? And for me, in response to my first, the answer to my, the first question is like to not consume so much content, you know, it's so easy to think like this is either, you know, a Christian mother, a Christian influencer, or, you know, someone who is an expert in this area, someone that's further along, which again, like I said, it's not bad to seek advice. Um, but if you go, if you go overload, overload with it, you can start to trust in that instead of trusting in our sign, who is Jesus and who we have readily available for us at all times. And so, Um, that's just kind of practically what I'm feeling like I need to take a step back on so that instead of spending that energy and time looking into other people's ways of doing things or advice, I can look into the word of God and that's, what's going to fill me with joy and peace. And, um, one final thing was just, I love when you said that we have to stop like loving the chills and the goosebumps. And, um, yeah, I think like we need to stop loving those feelings more than like conviction, Mm -hmm. because I think conviction also, you know, we're talking about sign. Jesus is the sign, like in this related to the the context of this passage, but also just the ways we ask for other little signs. Who should I marry? What should I, what car should I buy? You know, we ask for signs for those kind of things. Mm. And like our convictions are the signs, like for me personally, Mm. wondering about parent parenting, that mm-hmm. conviction I have to stop doing this or to start doing that, you know, that's the sign <laughs> to yep. just do it, to that's trust true. him and ask him for the strength and the power and what it looks like. And the times that I have done that in the past, he really does help me mm-hmm. in little ways. Um, and so, yeah, that's yeah, just my I, take I, um, So the great lengths that Jesus went to, was hell. He went to hell. Yeah. You can't get further away from God than hell. And he went to hell and back to bring wisdom to you. Yeah. That's so good. Wisdom to understand the signs of God. So he's like, then that way he's like the queen of Sheba, you know, and you know, with again, the not just no Jonah, but the people of Nineveh should have withered away and be eaten by worms like that tree did. But mm. God was trying to show Jonah, don't you see? I'm I'm giving the punishment to the tree instead of mm-hmm. Nineveh. And who mm-hmm. died on a tree? Jesus. That's mm-hmm. him giving the punishment to us. I mean to to Jesus instead of us. The real spiritual Ninevites. And so I love what she was saying. I love what you were saying about how, um, not just the great lengths, but the last thing you said about conviction, conviction. I I don't feel more alive than after I'm convicted. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. You would think mm-hmm. that the chills and the goosebumps and like, like, um, passion in the conference just happened. And I love passion, you know, and it's, it's, thousands of people in a room with their eyes closed and their hands up, just crying and weeping and singing. And that's beautiful. That's good. We need to worship God. Mm -hmm. But we have this illusion that going and having that experience is when I'm going to feel most spiritually alive. Mm -hmm. But actually what makes you feel most spiritually alive is when Piper is letting you have it (laughs) on that stage. Mm-hmm. And you are being convicted to your core. Yep. I mean, I have the mo- I have the best workout times after God has truly, deeply convicted me, because I go and I put my headphones on and I listen to some Christian rap, and I just work out and I feel so 
alive because I just feel one with the Christian rap. I feel one with the music because it's like, this is the life that I'm living. This uh, very, at times, violent Christian life, this like this very um, hard and challenging, you know, made it out the dirt kind of Christian life. This is what I'm a part of. And Christian rap really gets to the core of that sometimes, some certain artists. And I just love it because after a conviction, I'm like, yes, this is my life, you know, and like, and I'm, and I'm, I have so much purpose. I know who I am. Um, I don't feel that when I'm getting these goosebumps, you know, and, and goosebumps, uh, and conviction doesn't always come from God pointing out your sins. Sometimes conviction comes from God pointing out how much he loves you. Yeah. How gracious he Mm -hmm. is towards you. That's what that part in the last part of Jonah, when it says, should I not pity the 120,000 Ninevites and also the cows? That's me and you. We're the cows. You know, the, the last beans in Nineveh that God had business caring about were the cows. And yet God cared about them. Don't you see? When you feel that you're nothing but a piece of meat, when you're nothing but a grazing cow, God is looking at you saying, I want to save you. Yep. I want to take you from where you are and create you into something greater. Mm, that's good. You're precious to God. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's what you have to remember if you're going to stop this over-spiritualization, hyper-charismatic, seeking signs. You can't live spiritually like that. This is why people leave the church yeah. because they go, they get saved in a church that is all about charismaticness and, and signs and feel good and come to the altar. And all of a sudden, and then when they get to the real world, it can't hold up. It crushes them. Yeah. It crushes them and they leave the church mm-hmm. because it's like they have, they have no real spiritual strength. They have no real spiritual um, power because they haven't experienced the gospel. The power of God isn't in the signs. The power of God is in the preaching of the word of God Mm. in the true gospel. And that's why Jesus says uh, in the book of Matthew, in the early chapters, I came to preach the good news. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought you came to do healings. I thought you came to do exorcism. I thought you came to do this. I thought you came to do all this. He says, I came to preach the good news. What is the good news? That Jesus would die so that we might live. It's not like, oh, I'm feeling these great healings. I'm watching this exorcism. I'm getting these experience. Oh, yes, God is real. That's never going to be enough. You're too depraved. What you have to see is the good news. And that's why we do this podcast. That's why we preach it. We try to focus on the good news of Jesus every single episode. episode. And I feel like we've done a good job of that um, because it's just been our North Star hmm. for these you know, almost 110 episodes uh, but yeah, we want to hear, you know, you guys answer those two qu- questions in the comments. Yeah. There was, what great, le- what great lengths do you need to go to, to hear the wisdom of God, mm-hmm. to get the wisdom of God? And what sign do you need to stop asking God for? Mm-hmm. Um, answer both, answer one of them. Yeah. But um, yeah, did you want to say anything? Sorry. No, that's great. And Well, yeah, one thing is like. In this time, these people had this sign visibly among them, Jesus doing miracles, doing all these things. And today, um, you know, as we try to reach the lost or those who don't know him, because yes, like Alex was saying, we live in a quote unquote, air quotes, Christian nation. You know, the gospel has been, there's churches everywhere. People, most, uh, not most, but a lot of people have been exposed to the gospel or to Christianity. Um, but there still are those that haven't, like, we, I still hear stories. And I'm like, wow, you never like went to church even for like, you know, a friend's baptism. Like you never heard about Jesus, you know, like I even have heard about like Jews who don't even know anything about the new Testament, <laughs> like modern day Jews. And it's just like, it's crazy to me and it still exists. And so what, you know, what signs do these people have now? And it's part of that is our testimony. Mm-hmm. That's why our testimony as a living out our faith is so important. For example, like when I got saved, I worked at a restaurant and my coworkers, I was not like a mean coworker before, but they still saw a complete difference mm-hmm. and they were asking me questions and, you know, I didn't like necessarily lead anyone 
to repentance or to the faith, but they ask so many questions and I do see that as planting seeds and I unfortunately don't know where all of them are at today, but I hope and I pray that, you know, someone has watered and, you know, God has grown that. And so, um, our testimony is so important. And again, just us, um, spending time in his presence, that's, what's going to help us bear fruit Mm -hmm. and have the character of Christ so that people see the difference in us. Mm -hmm. Um, whether that's in your home, uh, maybe you have non-Christian parents or that's, or non-Christian family members or in your school, in your place of work, Mm -hmm. wherever God leads you. But, um, let that be in, you know, an encouragement, but also a challenge. Like, you know, we have this responsibility yeah. as Christians to now share, to go out into all the world and all the world might be your workplace. You know, it might mm-hmm. be the grocery store or whatever. Um, because yeah, like Alex was saying, Nineveh was pagan and they were willing to accept it. And then this next generation wasn't. So let us not be like the generation that Jesus was talking to and ministering amongst Mm -hmm. like, let us not be like that because we're comfortable in America, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, we love you guys. Thank you for joining us today. And, uh, if you want to support us, amenpodcast.com to support this, we do this full time and this message will be preached Sunday night at house church in our garage. Uh, another way that you can support us, is by liking and sharing the video, subscribing, rating, rating and reviewing. Yep, rating yes. and reviewing. We love reading our reviews, by the way. They are mm-hmm. so encouraging. So thank you guys if you've already done that. Yep. yep. And with that said, we love you. See you in the next one. Go out and be the church. Amen.